Hello and welcome. I'm excited about this video just because I think I did a good job. <laughs> Today we are talking about rental fixes specifically for your kitchen. So I went on Facebook Marketplace and I chose three kitchens that I felt were relatively generic but crossed a few different like ranges of generic kitchens. If that makes sense, I'll show you. This is the first one. This is the second one. And this is the third one. So three very different kitchens. They're not the best kitchens. They're all, I think, maybe you make an excuse because the apartment's a great location. Or, you know what, at least this place is a dishwasher. Or something that's, you know, it's checking your boxes in other areas, but we need to make this kitchen cuter. So, let's start with the first one. I think it's the most common in American rentals, this white and gray, sad kitchen. But I think she has potential. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume that in all these rentals, you cannot paint. For whatever reason, if you got caught before you moved out, it'd be some ridiculous catastrophe. Or maybe you just like don't feel like it. Maybe you don't want to paint. There's ways around painting. Because this is gray, I think we should definitely offset it with some yellow or some chartreuse and definitely a pop of red in there because what's cheerier than a pop of red? Something that I think a lot of people make the mistake of with this style rental kitchen is because it's poorly done modern, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but it's still kind of dated, you have to offset that by actually going vintage with a lot of your look, as opposed to throwing in more modern touches, it's gonna make it look like you're trying too hard to make it look modern and it's like really not. So because this is like a poorly modernized, renovated kitchen, we're going to offset it by putting in some really good vintage pieces. So starting with this rug, like I said, we're gonna pull in some yellow I think that this is like a great space for like this back area. This whole area I actually think is wrong. You can see on the wall next to the window that there's actually a outlet there. So I want to turn the refrigerator so it's next to the window but pushed over in the corner. So um, still it's going to be plugged in like that cord might be reaching a little bit but I think it's better than the way that it is right now because I think that it's taking up too much space. So turn the fridge. We actually could put like a little bistro set in there which I think would be super cute and a way better utilization of that space. I would recommend a little bistro table, something like this where it has like the marble top and a good cast iron base. It's what I had been looking for for my own space um, and settled for something else on Facebook which I regret doing. I should have spent the 200 on this rather than the 100 on what I have. But this video is not about me. And everything will be linked as well as I'm gonna link as much as I can. I got my hair cut today and I feel like there's little hairs all over me. And then I would just do something simple like bentwood chairs. Like anything simple bistro style that you can find on Facebook Marketplace. If you get lucky, lucky, if you get lucky, it is March after all. Um, if you get lucky and you can find something like cool and avant-garde on Facebook like this, go for it. This is a great space to be playful in because it's so gray and sad. The last thing I would do is change that light fixture because you can keep that light fixture and when you're ready to move out, you can swap it back. But I would do something like this where it's like kind of rustic-y looking um, but can fit like lots of different styles. This is actually... Uh, very similar to slash kind of is a light fixture that I'm putting in my kitchen sitting over there it's staring at me because every day on my day off I don't feel like switching the light fixture in here but again this video is not about me um, so that's what I would do I would do this like copper style or something similar but um, not too low and you can even swag it over top of your bistro table and chairs this kitchen is like really close. So I think if you have something similar to this, you can confuse your guests 
into thinking it's actually just mid-century modern. So here's how I would do that. The first thing is, is this light fixture. Definitely go straight for a mid-century modern style like this. You can go as space agey as you want um, or something like this. This one's just so cool and provides like texture and it's like more unique. Um, I haven't seen really anything like it. So I think that that would be a cool option, but it's definitely going to make all of that like oaky cupboard look more like a mid-century modern oaky cupboard. Less like a sad 90s oaky cupboard. I think changing that light fixture is like such an easy way to kind of make that look that way. There's a lot of good opportunities here, I think, for art. <laughs> There's like these two odd spaces between the cabinets. I'm assuming one was supposed to be for a microwave. They're just like left blank. And I think fill those perfectly with some art. Definitely go with something in like primary colors like this and definitely sticking in like maybe like a kind of vintagey vibe uh, or mid-century vibe. Just like get some good frames and invest in these pieces because you're gonna see them every day. You don't want them to be like falling out of the frame. Take the time to like make it like look really, really good. And then the last thing is just to do a runner. I chose this one just because I think that it's gonna be really easy in a kitchen, it's jute. You don't have to worry, fuss with it too much. But also this is a dark kitchen. So I like that this will brighten it up a little bit. And I like that it's like a little geometric. I think that plays into the mid-century, but it's still kind of, you know, you could take this into your next space and it can transition that way as well. This kitchen maybe has too much potential. <laughs> But like I said, I wanted to provide like a range of kitchens and there's still something in this kitchen that we'll all look at and be like, yes, that is in a lot of kitchens that makes me upset. The first thing I want to do is put a very, very large piece of art on this large wall. I think it's just such a great opportunity. It makes your space look more expensive or rather it makes you look more expensive. If you have a piece of art that's filling the entire wall or it's just like big on the wall as opposed to doing like, you know, a bunch of smaller pieces, this is a big wall, tall ceilings. So it just looks so much better if you fill it up. You can, you can stretch your own canvas and do this yourself. My husband's an artist, so we stretch canvas all the time. There's a billion YouTube videos online teaching you how to stretch canvas. I'm just saying, if you can't afford art, you can make some. Even if you stretch it, and this is the most basic thing you could possibly do, but draw a red rectangle. I'm telling you, it's gonna look way cooler than having an empty wall. My husband will probably kill me for saying that because people should just be buying art, but not everyone can afford art. I can't afford my husband's art. I'm just fortunate enough that I married the guy and I get it for free. Because these walls are yellow, I definitely want a vintage rug in here, like a Persian style rug. I would always go in the red family because that's <clears throat> my personal preference, but some people don't like red, I guess. So you can go in the blue family in this room because you know it'll complement with the yellow walls really well. So. I would fill it in with something like this because it's a longer space. You would want to do maybe like a seven by 10, six and a half by 10. That's what this is. This was, you know, it's from Revival. It is a vintage rug, but you can find tons of rugs like this. Okay, and again, I kind of want to go bistro in here, but I want to do it kind of like this. I think it's a good opportunity to have kind of like a banquet situation. If you have a place near you, like I do, it's called Creative Reuse. They have like rescued diner stuff or rescued church items. You can go and get like an old pew or something and make this yourself. It's a long wall. Put a couple of, put like a, you know, a rectangular table or two bistro tables and a couple of chairs and you can seat so many more people by elongating your dining space instead of just you know doing something like that doesn't quite fit the space like i don't understand why your only option is like a rectangle or round 
And that doesn't fit all spaces. Sometimes like long and narrow is the right way. You know, I set up a banquette in my own kitchen. It just makes more sense for a space like this. Focusing on the other side of the room, I want to see like maybe three leaning large prints above the cabinets there. It's definitely something bright and colorful, but I think you should throw a photograph in there as well. I don't like when art is all the same, uh, you know, next to each other. So kind of adding some variation in there. I like this black and white image amongst the like bright colorful prints. And then last but not least, this is the only thing I talk about backsplashes is I would cover up that awful <laughs> backsplash. It's fortunately just behind the oven, but I would maybe even extend it all the way across. You don't have to get a ton of these because they're these large tin copper ceiling tiles or you can use them on, on walls as well, but they're big. So you probably only need like six of them, I'd say, to stretch across. Again, they're, they're aluminum, so you can cut out, you know, where your outlets. I just think that would look so much better in here than one, leaving it open. Like I'm fine with those, with it being blank, but because you're already covering up that awful backsplash behind the oven, I would just go across the whole way. And for those of you that have this backsplash in your kitchen, cover that baby up with, with large tiles. It's just so much easier. You could do command, like peel and stick situations so that you can easily take them down when you're ready to move out and reuse them somewhere else. Those are my tips for these three kitchens. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like it. Thanks for being here. I absolutely love you. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. Okay, love you, bye.